Now it's time for some high school hoops, some great matchups across the area. That's right. Let's begin with a quality contest between the Manhattan Lady Indians and the Hayden Lady Wildcats. Manhattan enters tonight's contest with only one loss, while Hayden is still undefeated. Early on, it's Hayden's Bree Schmidt. Fights for it down low, then muscles one up. Gets it to rattle around and in for her. Good play, but defense was the story this evening. Manhattan's Darby Price rejects Schmidt as she's trying to make a move on the inside. And then on the other end, it's Jordan Linner with a big block of her own. Lots of great defense going on in this one. Hayden keeps attacking Kira Loesch with a full head of steam as she makes her way to the bucket for two. Manhattan responds, however. Par McNair gets it and then fires in a bullet pass to Amari Ehi for the deuce. And a quick strike by the Lady Wildcats on the in, excuse me, by Manhattan on the inbound play. They go up on top and then they end up squeaking it out in the end. The Lady Indians come away with a 51-49 win over previously undefeated Hayden. In the boys' matchup, Hayden is coming off its first win of the season. Meanwhile, the Indians lost for the first time all year on Friday. Check out the move by Ryan Anderson, the junior guard, with a nice up and under. Nice way to shield his body from the defenders. Manhattan's Jenner Hickel, very aggressive inside for the Indians. He gathers his own miss and scores the layup. Hayden finds a way to crack the zone. Dribble penetration by Brendan Hutley. On the other end, it's Hickel again. He's going to crash the boards for the Tribe. However, just not enough production from Manhattan on this night as Hayden's going to hold serve at home. Wildcats earn the splits, winning 54-46. to Island Park looking to keep its undefeated record intact. At home, facing Shawnee Heights, a team they beat by 16 just one week ago. Head coach Ken Darting and his Scots looking for a repeat of that result. The Scots' Eddie Hunt decides to say, if you won't guard me from out here, I'll just knock it down. Piece of cake, no big deal. Highland Park got out to a quick 7-0 lead, capped off by this Jamal McMurray three-pointer in transition. Tony Barksdale trying to get Heights back into it, but Hunt says, no sir, not tonight. The big rejection for him and the Scots. So next possession, Bark Barksdale decides to stay away from the paint. And it proves to be a good decision. He buries the three-pointer. However, it's too much Highland Park in this one as McMurray answers from downtown. The Scots hang on in the end and remain perfect. They get the 55-51 win at home over Shawnee Heights. On the girls' side, the Lady T-Birds got the better of the Lady Scots in round one between these two. Heights trailed by four at the break, but they picked it up a notch in the second half. Jazz Sweet gets the offensive rebound, and despite four Lady Scots, she still manages to score inside. Highland Park responds with a triple of their own. Destiny Gillian rainbows one in, but the Lady T-Birds were just too strong down low. Lily, Letty Stewart goes glass and then uses the right hand as she and Heights begin to pull away. Lady Scots tried to keep it close. Kyra Tucker connects on the free throw line jumper. But it was too little too late. Michaela Wells ices it for Heights with a three-pointer from the corner. The Lady T-Birds go on to win it 41-30 over Highland Park. The undefeated Seaman Lady Vikings pay a visit to Washburn Rural, who plays its third straight game at home. A very competitive contest, Lauren Biggs drains a triple for Rural as Lady Blues take a two-point advantage. But Seaman answers right back. Lady Vikings work it around to Brooke McMillan, who knocks down the three-pointer. Seaman back in front. Lady, the lead doesn't last too long, however. With six minutes left, Rural goes inside to Courtney Winkley. The soft hook shot goes down. It comes down to the final minute. Tied at 41. Seaman goes to its clutch performer one more time. McMullen. She drops in 14 points. None bigger than that one with 32 seconds to go. Last chance for Rural. Seven tenths of a second to go. Lady Blues going for the win at the buzzer. Biggs to Kelsey Brown. No good. Seaman hangs on 43-41. Steve Alexander's club stays perfect. Now the Seaman Vikings boys squad, Seaman have find their stride right now. They've won back-to-back -back ball games, looking for three in a row. Blake Peterson and the Junior Blues trying to snap a mini losing skid. Vikings start out red hot. Joe Miller from the corner, splash down. He had 25 the other night. Junior Blues respond as Peterson snags that one out of midair, puts it back up and in. But not many rebound opportunities for Seaman because the Vikings had the outside shot working. Chase Bauer, not one, but two from the on the arc. Bauer power indeed. Wonder if he's related to Jack Bauer. Matt and I are definitely fans of that 24 show. We can only hope. Yeah, 19 points for Bauer. Miller adds 11 for the Vikings as Seaman pulls away in the end. They win their third straight game. Vikes win it 59-50. to Elsewhere in the Centennial League, the Emporia girls take down Topeka West 44-25. 
But the Chargers get the better of the Spartans in the guys game. 73-45, Topeka West is your winner. Over in Junction City, the Topeka High girls get the win on the road, 43-36. And the boys game came down to the wire, but the Blue Jays pull it out and get the one-point W, 60-59 over the Trojans. Now on to Jeff West High School where the Tigers are feeling strong as they take on the Raiders from Wamigo. Yeah, showing off the muscles right there. Gun show time. Raiders first quarter, they get the ball right inside. Eli Miller wins a tip off and lands on the hands of Jared Ayers. Nice one over the Trenton York who puts it up and in for two. Raiders strike again as John Tenike steals the ball from Brent Roberts of the Tigers. He's going to go in for the easy layup. Tigers fighting back though as Connor Mickens passes it up to Jacob Dickey. And here it comes in for the deuce. And then it's Sean McMahon gets two and is fouled. He gets the and one. But the Raiders, Jared Ayers, wants three as well. But in the end, it's just the home team winning by one, prevailing 43-42 does Jeff West. On the ladies' side, defending 4A state champs and 7-0 Wamigo have no issues on the road at Jeff West. The Lady Raiders, the Lady Red Raiders, excuse me, improved to 8-0 with a 53-13 victory. Royal Valley on the road, road at Holton. Girls contest, Lady Wildcats win at 43-31, and the guys make a clean sweep as Holton wins 58-48. The Santa Fe Trail girls take care of Perry LeCompton, 45-32, and a thriller in the guys contest. The Cause make it four in a row after they come away with a 67-60 overtime win. Congratulations to Jeff Hawkins mm -hmm. and the Cause. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this.